My name is Colleen and I'm an educator at the St. Louis Art Museum. Welcome to We Wednesday. Today we're going to be talking about drawing. What do you like to draw? We'll start by reading a story together, then we'll be looking at some art from the museum's collection, and we'll end by making our own art together. Feel free to pause the video at any time if you'd like to get a closer look, if you'd like to talk about something with the people that you're with, or if you need to gather some art supplies. Are you ready? Let's get started. Today we're going to be reading a story called Drawn Together. If you've joined me for We Wednesday before, you may know that when I read a new book, I like to take a look at the cover to see if I can find out some things about the story before I read. Let's take a look at this cover together. What do you notice? I see lots of clues on this cover. First, I notice two people here in the center, a child and an older grown-up. And I'm wondering if maybe the older grown-up is the child's grandparent. And it looks like they're hugging and they're smiling. So I think they're happy to see each other. And I notice there's lots of details around them. So first I notice this figure here that looks like they have some special clothing on, and a hat, and even might have a wand in their hand. And I notice this other figure that also has on some special clothing and has some kind of staff in their hand. And when I'm looking at the figures more closely, I see that they each have looks like something to draw with in their hands. And so I'm wondering if maybe they drew a lot of the things that we see around them. What do you think the story might be about based on what we can see? Let's find out. Drawn Together Written by Min Lei, illustrated by Dan Santat. The story has actually already begun on this page. If we can look at the pictures. See a child here? Looks like they've gotten out of the car and their grown-up is dropping them off somewhere. Now before we continue in the story, this book is written a little differently than maybe some other books that you've read before. And it's written more like a comic book or a graphic novel. Have you ever read a comic book or a graphic novel before? Comic books and graphic novels use pictures to tell most of the story in boxes like this. And you can read the pictures just like you read words when you read another type of story. So I'm going to describe the pictures to you, but you can also make your own descriptions based on what we see together. Let's get started. So we see a child here, and they're ringing the doorbell. And when they open the door, it's an older grown-up. And I think we know that this is the child's grandfather. And they're greeting each other with a bow. And the grandfather waves to the grown-up in the car as they drive away. And the child Hmm, doesn't look like he's so sure about what's about to happen. You see they're sitting down to eat together. And the grandfather has a bowl of noodle soup. And they're using chopsticks. And the child has a hot dog, french fries, and a salad. And he's using a fork. Now they sit down to eat together, and the boy says, "What's so what's new, Grandpa? And the grandpa responds in Thai, and he says, how are you doing? And it looks like they don't say anything back to each other. 
because they don't speak the same language. So this book is inspired by the experiences of the author who wrote the words in the story and the illustrator who drew the pictures. So the author is Vietnamese American and his grandparents spoke mainly Vietnamese when he was growing up. And the illustrator who drew the pictures is Thai American and his grandmother mostly spoke Thai when he was growing up. So they had trouble communicating with each other because they spoke different languages. Maybe you know someone who speaks another language, maybe a family member or a friend. How do you think the characters in the story might be feeling right now? Let's see what happens next. So they sit down to watch TV together and Looks like the grandfather looks over, wondering what the child's thinking. Looks like they're watching an exciting show on TV. And the character in the TV show, in Thai, says, Dragon! And we see they're, they're trying to talk to each other again. So the child says, can we watch something else? And the grandfather says something in Thai, and he says, would you like to watch something else? So they're trying to communicate with each other and they have the same ideas, but they're just not quite there yet. So they both have kind of sad looks on their faces and they keep watching the show on TV. So a child gets up and walks away and goes to their backpack and gets out some paper and some drawing materials. Hmm, my grandfather looks over his shoulder as he starts to draw. And he starts drawing himself as a wizard. And the grandfather looks really excited about that. The grandfather goes to get something, and what does he come out with? His own sketchbook and something to draw with. And the boy starts thinking, right when I gave up on talking, my grandfather surprised me by revealing a world beyond words. And in a flash, We see each other for the first time. So, the child's drawn themselves as a wizard, and the grandfather has drawn himself as a character that he knew growing up. What's different about these characters? All the things we could never say come pouring out. And we build a new world that even words can't describe. Just when we're closer than ever, that old distance comes roaring back. You see, there's a dragon here that's separating them. So, grabs the wand and aims it at the dragon, grabs the staff, 
this time I'm not afraid. Because I know that together, we can make our way across. Now, after years of searching for the right words, we find ourselves happily speechless. If we look a little closer at this page, we can see all the drawings from the story that we just read up on the wall that they drew together. How do you think the two characters in the story might be feeling now? So, Grown-up comes back, really excited to see the child. They hug, child gets in the car, and they both have each other's drawing materials. And he waves goodbye as they drive away. The end. I invite you to think about your favorite part of the story and talk about that with the people that you're with. We're going to travel to the museum now to look at some works of art. Let's imagine how we might get there. Since we're talking about drawing today, let's imagine drawing our way to the museum. Maybe you're going to draw a long, windy path and you're going to skip there. Or maybe you're going to draw a giant bridge over an ocean and you're going to cross that bridge to get to the museum. Or maybe you're going to draw something totally different. You decide. Once you've decided, if you'd like, you can close your eyes and imagine yourself going. Ooh, that was a really exciting journey today. I'm really glad that we made it. In order to get ready to look at our works of art, we're going to be doing an experience I'm calling our Mindfulness Minute. Mindfulness is taking the time to slow down and really pay attention to what you're doing. We're going to be using drawing to practice mindfulness today to help us communicate how we might be feeling. We've been talking about how drawing can help us communicate our thoughts and feelings. For our mindfulness activity today, we're going to need something to draw with, like a pen or a pencil, and a piece of paper. It can be any paper that you have around your home. Your recycling bin is a great place to look for that paper. Or if you have a notebook or a sketchbook that you like to draw in, you can use that too. So to start, let's get into a comfortable position. Let's get out any wiggles or energy that we might have before we start to settle our minds and our bodies. Are you ready? Let's wiggle, 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 wiggle. Let's take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Let's take your pen or pencil or whatever drawing material you're going to use and your piece of paper and touch your pen or pencil to your piece of paper. If you'd like, you can close your eyes. Think about how it feels to have your drawing material on your paper. How does your pen or pencil feel in your hand? How does the paper feel? Begin to make any movements with your pen or pencil on your paper. Anything that feels right in the moment. And think about how it feels to drag your pen or pencil across the page. Now, I want you to think of an emotion that you're feeling right now. Maybe you're feeling happy, excited, peaceful, or maybe you're feeling sad or lonely or worried. 
anything that you're feeling right now is okay. I want you to take that emotion and I want you to translate it into drawing on the page. So maybe you're going to be moving your pencil really quickly all across the page. Or maybe you're just going to be moving really slowly and making the same kind of lines or shapes over and over again in a small space. You decide. So take a moment to think about that emotion and to use your pen or pencil on the page to express that emotion. Once you feel like you've gotten your emotion down on the page and you've communicated through drawing, you can put your pencil down. You can take one last deep breath in through our nose and out through our mouths. I feel much more ready to look at some really amazing works of art. We're going to look at some works of art from the museum's collection together. If you'd like, you can scroll down on the page to get a closer look at the images we'll be viewing. Feel free to pause the video at any time to do this. Take a close look at this work of art. What's going on in this picture? What do you see that makes you say that? zoom in to get a closer look. What new details can you see now? Find a line in this work of art. Trace the line with your finger in the air. How would you describe that particular line? Let's imagine we're inside this drawing among all of these lines and marks. How do you feel? Let's take a listen. This is a drawing by an artist named Vincent van Gogh. It's called Fishing Boats at Saint-Marie de la Mer. Saint-Marie de la Mer is the name of a town in the south of France located on the ocean. This drawing was inspired by a painting that van Gogh made which is a part of the collection at the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. Let's take a look at the painting. What about these two works of art is the same? What about them is different? Which one do you prefer? There's no right or wrong answer. Artists use drawing to make finished art, to plan for another work of art they want to create, or to simply communicate an idea or feeling. Let's see how another artist used drawing to make their art. Take a close look at this work of art. What do you notice? Let's zoom in to get a closer look. What more did you discover? If the figure in this work of art could say something, what do you think they might say based on what we can see? This is a drawing made by an artist named Mary Cassatt. It's called Head of Simone in a Green Bonnet with Wavy Brim Number 2. The drawing shows a young girl named Simone who most likely lived in the village near the artist's home. Mary Cassatt created this drawing using pastels, which at the time wasn't thought of as a material to use for serious art. Mary Cassatt and the Impressionist art movement she was a part of changed that. If we could see the setting or the background for this drawing, what do you think it might look like based on the rest of the drawing? Artists make drawings that communicate ideas, feelings, people, and places using lines, shapes, and colors. 
How do you like to communicate with your drawings? If you could communicate how you're feeling right now with a drawing, what would you draw? If you'd like, you can talk about your ideas with the people that you're with. Now that we looked at some art together, let's travel back home so we can make our own art. So draw your windy path and skip, or draw your giant bridge and cross it, or draw something totally different, and let's head home. For our art making project today, we are going to be playing a drawing game. This is a game that artists came up with a long time ago to have fun with drawing and communicate with each other through their drawings. You can play it with a group of people, a partner, or by yourself. So I'm going to show you how to play with a partner or how you can play on your own. We're going to need a few different materials for our project today. We're going to need drawing materials, so I have colored pencils and markers here today, but you can use anything that you have at home. If you're going to be playing the game by yourself, you might want a scissors and you'll also need paper. So I've got paper in lots of different sizes. This is a good size paper to use if you're gonna play with a partner or with a group of people. And if you're gonna play by yourself, then you might want a full size sheet of paper. Any color or kind of paper you have at home is fine. So I have a friend here today who's gonna to help me show you how to play with a partner. So we're gonna use markers for our drawing game today. And we're going to use this size sheet of paper. And what we're each gonna do is we're gonna draw different parts of a body along the length of the page. So I'm going to start by drawing the top part of a figure. I'm gonna fold it over. And then my friend here is going to continue and draw the next part. And we're gonna each take turns drawing different parts of a body. And then we'll see what it looks like when we're finished. And the idea is when you fold it over that your partner can't see what you drew so that you can create a fun, um, kind of interesting figure and communicate with your partner through drawing. All right, I think we're ready to play. So I'm gonna start and my partner's not gonna look at what I'm drawing and we'll see what happens. It's time to reveal what our figure looks like. Wow. So we've got an astronaut with the body of a leopard, I think. And they have a cool dress on and some very interesting shoes. So thanks to my friend for showing us how to play with a partner. Now I'm gonna show you how you can play by yourself too. Now, if you'd like to play this drawing game by yourself, you're going to need a larger piece of paper. So I just have a plain piece of white paper right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a folded piece of paper that's going to allow us to mix and match different parts of different figures that you might draw. So if you have your piece of paper, you wanna hold it horizontally and we're gonna fold it into three parts. So you're gonna to wanna to take the bottom part of the paper and just fold it up to the center. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And you're going to fold it up to meet the top half there. You might need a grown-up's help to do this part. So now you have your trifold here. And we're going to need our scissors for this next part. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut two different slits on each of the flaps that are on the outside of this trifold. So you can start with whichever side you want. So I'm going to start over here and I'm going to cut just about a third of the way down the page and I'm just going to cut to the fold. Then I'm going to fold that in. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to cut to the same part of the fold where the other cut was made. So now I have these two folds that fold on top of each other and I'm going to do the same thing one more time. So I'm going to cut here to the center. Fold that over. 
so I know where to where to put that fold. And then I'm gonna cut one more time. And now I have all of these different sections that I can draw different figures. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get to draw three different figures and then we can mix and match them depending on where the folds are on our paper. So I'm gonna draw one figure here on this side of the paper, one figure on the inside, and then another figure on this side. So I'm gonna start by drawing in the center here and we're gonna separate into three different sections. So when I played with a partner, we did four different sections so we could each have a turn to do it, to draw two times. But this time, since you're drawing by yourself, we're gonna imagine dividing our figure into three different parts. So the top part of the figure, the middle part, and the bottom part. So I'm gonna begin by drawing my first figure here. So now I have one figure on this middle part of my trifold here. And what I can do next is draw another figure on this part of the page. And this, is, if you're doing this by yourself, you can decide to draw lots of different figures. So here I'm gonna start another figure here. So you can think about animals or made up creatures or people, whatever you wanna do. It's your art, so you get to make it the way that you want to make it. And you can think about communicating different ideas through your drawing. So now what I could do is I could continue drawing the rest of this figure, and then I could mix and match the different parts of my trifold. So I have another one here that I already completed. So here's my first drawing. I did a shark, then I drew, did a person who was juggling and on roller skates, and then I decided to make kind of like a monster um, wearing bunny slippers that um, kind of had pink and blue, blue fur. So now what I can do is I can mix and match the different parts of my trifold to make different figures, which is really fun. So this is kind of a fun way that you can experiment with your drawings, and think about creating different kinds of figures and communicating different ideas with their drawings. So that's going to be our drawing game with a partner or playing by ourselves. Thank you for joining me today here at We Wednesday. We hope you had fun. I wanted to show you the drawing games that we did together. So this is the one that I did with my friend. This is our combination drawing that we each got to draw different parts of this figure. It was really fun to take turns and then to see the final result. I also wanted to show you the one that I did by myself and this is another great way to do it the drawing game if you're just doing it on your own. And with this trifold you can combine your drawings to create lots of different figures which is really fun. We would love to see your drawing games. You can share them with us on social media and use the hashtags STLArtMuseum and We Wednesday. I wanted to let you know that this is going to be my last We Wednesday video. Sometimes grown-ups change jobs to do different things. Maybe you've changed schools or moved to a new place to do different things too. I want to thank you for spending time with me on your computers and your screens and your TVs to talk about art and to make art. I have loved every minute of it, and I hope you've had fun too. There are a few things I want you to remember from our time together, whether this is your first Wee Wednesday or your 38th Wee Wednesday. You are an artist. Yes, you! The best materials to use are the ones that you already have. Take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. And this one's important. Keep on creating because the world needs to hear your story. Bye.